since the for the recording we uh don't currently have a quorum but we're going to start with the um celebration of learning about the lead em up classroom well thank you my name is shane oaks i'm the student support coordinator here at white river valley high school and i've been at the school now for uh the past four years um tonight i'm going to talk about lead em up uh, and this is a curriculum and an organization that's been around for uh, the past seven years or so, and it originated within the, the team sports space, uh, working with uh, young athletes and coaches um, from the middle school, high school, and, and collegiate levels. Um, I had the, the pleasure of learning about this through a coaches forum back in late 2019. Um, and uh, became interested in the possibility of using this within a, the broader uh, school-wide community, uh, extending beyond just the athletic space. Um, in 2021, we applied for and were chosen as one of 10 schools across North America uh, to pilot the Lead'em Up classroom. Um, and we started using this um, school-wide as our social-emotional learning curriculum at the beginning of last year. Uh, we deliver that through our teacher advisory system. Um, CASEL, or the Collaborative uh, for Academic and Social-Emotional Learning, is really the, um, the leader in this space around SEL. And, and they define SEL as a process through which all young people and adults acquire and apply the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to develop healthy identities, manage emotions, achieve personal and collective goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain supportive relationships, and make responsible and caring decisions. Um, where, does this, where does this happen? Uh, really, it happens all around us. It happens in our communities. It happens with our families and our caregivers. Uh, and certainly for our students who spend a large majority of their time, it happens within the schools uh, and within the classrooms where they have opportunities to practice uh, and work on self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, uh, relationship skills, and social awareness. As we've come out of the pandemic, experts are saying that students have emerged uh, roughly about two years behind in their social emotional development. Uh, and so our timing and rolling this out as a high school uh, was very, very intentional. Uh, I mentioned that we teach this or deliver this through our teacher advisory uh, program at the high school. In, the mission of our teacher advisory program is to develop a sense of belonging and community that fosters students' development of their own identity as learners and leaders. Uh, and the Lead'em Up curriculum is just one of the components of our advisory system. The curriculum itself, um, and I grabbed this slide from an old PowerPoint, so it has been around seven years now, um, but it's a, a curriculum that really uh, focuses on uh, developing communication skills, confidence, engagement, enthusiasm, focus, habits, relationships, self-awareness, and self-discipline. Um, they talk about the curriculum being applied or used through an MPS filter, uh, and that stands for memorable, portable, and sticky. Uh, so the concepts, the language, the ideas, are easy to remember. Uh, they can be used across multiple settings and situations. Uh, and they just are concepts that stick with kids uh, and adults uh, and are easy to remember. One of the core lessons within Lead 'em Up is this idea of the green team. Uh, and so you might hear students talking about being green. And, and what does green mean? Well, when we talk about being green, Green really represents special. Uh, specifically, people that bring out the best in others um, and are consistent at this uh, day in and day out. Uh, people that you know that you can count on and that they're going to show up selfless, they're going to be hardworking, committed, 
uh, encouraging and enthusiastic. Um, within this, green falls on one end of the scale. Uh, and at the other end of the scale, we have uh, the color red. Uh, we might talk about red moments or uh, people showing up with red behaviors. Uh, and as you can imagine, those would be um, things, situations that are toxic, uh, bringing a lot of negativity, uh, can be demanding, uh, and really a drain on the culture. And then within that, there's also uh, a category called gray. Uh, and we think of gray as people that are kind of floaters, uh, that they're easy, uh, just kind of go with the flow, uh, trying to stay under the radar, not drawing too much attention, uh, looking to follow others. Um, and there's nothing wrong with being gray at all. And in fact, um, in a lot of spaces, it's, it's quite welcome. Um, but we talk about, really, when we're talking about building a strong school, uh, school culture, um, if we're just living in the gray, if we're just kind of doing enough to get by, we're not building anything special. Um, and that's really important, I think. So. School-wide culture starts with our standards. And one of the first activities that we, we do within our curriculum after we teach this concept of the green team is to identify what are the leadership traits, the character traits that our students themselves value the most. Uh, we ask them to paint a picture of what they want their, their school experience to look like and feel like. Um, and, and this turns into a brainstorming activity uh, where different values and themes really bubble up. Uh, and you can see this year's standards uh, came up with five different traits. Uh, trustworthy, supportive, loyal, adaptable, and compassionate. And these are all values that were identified and voted on by the entire student body. And I think that part's really important because it provides them a sense of ownership in shaping, naming, and identifying uh, the space that they want to spend their time in. Lead'em Up also fits really nicely within our PBIS system, our Positive Behavioral Intervention and Supports. Um, not only do we set school-wide expectations, um, but we spend a lot of time recognizing positive behavior uh, and celebrating student success and achievement. And within the Lead 'em Up curriculum, uh, we have what they call a green verification process. So with social media today, you might see that uh, different celebrities or high profile um, people uh, have their accounts verified, and there's a, a blue check mark that represents that that, uh, that person is really who they are saying who they are. Um, and so this is a, a twist on this, but really, um, to be verified green means that you are consistently showing up and living out the values that we've identified as a school on a consistent basis. And so how do we, how do we figure this out? Um, throughout the year, all students and staff have the ability to nominate other, each other uh, for green consideration of being green verified. Uh, and about four to five times throughout the school year, we will take all of those nominations uh, and vote on and select um, those individuals that really rise to the top. Now, we also, through this process of nominating, share out um, the specific examples of what brought somebody to take the time to nominate or recognize or celebrate somebody else within the community. And those stories, those examples, uh, get directly shared with the person that's being nominated, regardless of whether or not they get verified. So throughout the um, school year, People could randomly open up their email and, and get an email saying, 
you've been nominated for green verification, congratulations. And then they read down and they see somebody writing something really nice about something that they've done and, and appreciating them. And as a person that filters and sees all of these nominations and sends out to the students and the staff, uh, a lot of times I get replies back um, just kind of recognizing how touched or how important that was for that person to hear uh, on that day when they received it. Uh, and I think it really makes a, a big, ad, a big impact with our, our broader school culture. At the end of the year, um, for all the students that have been nominated, uh, we'll have one other special recognition. Uh, and that's really, a, we call it the most valuable green. So of all the students and staff that have been ver verified throughout the year, uh, we get to select one standout student and one standout staff uh, for that honor. Uh, you can see a few pictures of uh, both students and staff who have been verified so far this school year. Uh, and I, I, say I really I enjoy looking so. at all the smiling faces in these photos. In addition to that, uh, as I said, Lead'em Up has been around for seven years. It's a program that's used across North America. Uh, they also have their own um, special award and that's a recognition and that's called the Green 13. And so each year of about 10,000 or so student, students and student athletes that interact with the Lead Em Up program, uh, coaches and teachers nominate individuals who really rise to the top um, and demonstrate what it means to, to live out their, um, their lives in a green manner. Last year, our first year working with Lead Em Up, uh, one of our very own, Wes Trombley, uh, was recognized with his national award uh, as a Green 13 recipient. Uh, and for anybody out there that knows Wes, I think you know the, the character that he has, uh, the presence that he brings to uh, the groups, the community, and the, the impact he had on the school, uh, and certainly was well-deserving of this award. So what is the impact? Uh, why is it important to have a social emotional learning curriculum within our school? Uh, well, it, it allows us to set a clear vision for what we want our school to look like and feel like on a daily basis. Um, we are constantly creating a culture of celebration, ensuring that we shine a light on all the good things that happen within our school community and don't get just focused on uh, the, the negative things or, or the missteps that might come up. Uh, we're helping students to develop the skills that they need to embrace and recognize leadership opportunities as they present themselves. Uh, we're working to improve the climate and culture. Uh, and, and we're also looking and have been effective in reducing our student discipline issues within the high school. Now, I know the principals are going to talk about uh, a board report later on, um, but this is just one example of what our uh, behavior observation referrals has looked like over the last two school years um, since we rolled out Lead em Up. And while I'm not going to give all the credit to this work uh, to just using the Lead em Up curriculum, uh, I think that it certainly has played a role in shaping the attitude, the way that we engage students, support students, um, and our intentionality in working to develop a positive, healthy culture for our school. Um, so uh, one, of the, one of the quotes that uh, Lead'em Up says uh, or uses all the time is, be green, build green. And uh, I leave that with any questions or comments that folks might have. I didn't have any questions, but that was very informative, you know, to hear about this and getting to kind of hear more specifics was really helpful and seems like a really great program. So thank you.
I just would like to say that, you know, there's a lot of programs out there and it's sometimes it's not the program, it's the person behind the program. And I just want to thank Shane for all he's done for our school and the culture. And I, I tell people that I think Shane bleeds green because he's really, he goes by it. You know, a lot of people may talk the talk, but he definitely walks it. So thank you, Shane. Just ask Kirby. Thanks very much, Shane. Um, oh, we still don't have Peggy. Um, principals, would you like to do your report while we wait? So we have our regular principals report, and then we have our social emotion data report. So maybe we'll start with our our principals report. Um, I don't know. No, Pam, you're virtual. So I just would say, you know, it feels like a short turnaround from our last board meeting just because we had that break in the middle. Um, but to highlight, uh, we had our kickoff assembly in the elementary. We're kicking off uh, respect. So I'm sorry, responsibility. We went over that uh, on both campuses. And then um, really nice partnership with the middle school. We had a guest speaker in talking about um, vaping. And so while the whole elementary did not attend, our fifth graders who will be transitioning to middle school did attend that. Um, and uh, it was a really great presentation and I thought just a nice segue for our students who will be moving up to middle school next year. So uh, thank you to the middle school for inviting our, our older elementary to join in that. So it was really wonderful. Add anything for your highlights? Uh, no, I think Shane did a really good job with uh, talking about lead them up in social and emotional. But one of the things is the reduction in school discipline. And one of the things I think is interesting, kids will come in and when they know they've done something, right away they say, I just had a red moment. So the language and the philosophy behind Lead em Up is definitely going through our entire school. So it's good to see. I, I don't know when you two want me to jump in. Just tell me. <laughs> you want me to go? Okay, sorry, I'm virtual, but um, Andrew, I think you and I might be suffering from the same uh, same thing. And so I appreciate being able to be here at, at my house and share with you a little bit tonight. So I, um, I'm just gonna read from my notes. There's just two areas I wanted to highlight for today. Uh, one is around the SEL report, which I'll speak to that in a second. And the other piece, the shorter piece in terms of what you have in print was the, um, request to have the middle school folks look at their schedule and increase the number of minutes of direct contact that core teachers have with students. So we have we have worked through that particular adjustment of our schedule. We have not implemented it yet. Our hope and our goal is that I call it a new schedule, but it's really an adjusted schedule. Will roll out on. January 30th, Monday, January 30th. It's a natural sort of transition mid trimester. Um, I'll just give you a couple of the key points. And um, I also will be having sort of a video conference conversation with all of the kids to let them know about this next week, as well as just shooting a, a memo home to folks, just giving that uh, an overview of what looks different in the schedule. Um, the, the core pieces of it are that there the core classes, meaning science, social studies, literacy, and math, during full weeks will meet five days a week. And so that equates out to, when we're talking about minutes, it's four hours and 30 minutes or 270 minutes. And again, this is a schedule adjustment for the remainder of this year. During the uh, early release weeks, there are four hours or 240 minutes of core content time um, with a callback opportunity being built in on Friday morning during that early release day for teachers to be able to access kids and do some catch up and for what for a variety of reasons. So the predominant changes to to the schedule are the number of days per week and the minutes. And then we also in order to do that, um, there are the pod advisory, which is a really significant part of the middle school environment in the middle level learner the advisory still will happen each morning and then on friday afternoons during the full weeks we will continue to have our pod advisory with a focus 
Um, we are going to be focusing around SEL and building that community around the school-wide expectations and the um, ships that define uh, the middle school, which is citizenship. I won't get them all right now. I don't have them in front of me. So those are the parts of the schedule that have been adjusted. We are also beginning to with our first meeting next week, I believe it is, as a district team to start talking about schedule for next year. So these conversations are all happening as we go. So I just wanted to give a little overview. Hopefully that's helpful about the adjustments that we are making to the schedule for the rest of this year. Um, so I don't know if anyone had any questions that I, I may or may not have an answer for, but I'm happy to try. Okay. Um, and then since I'm still talking and then I can be quiet, uh, the SEL report that you all received, um, the winter in Vermont is very challenging. We had planned to spend our Friday afternoon last week as a staff really dissecting and analyzing the data report from September to December. So that didn't happen. So there's gonna be a backup plan uh, in place between myself and the student support coordinator. But what I also wanna point out is that I personally looked at it with a just from an overview because I have only been there since November 28th. So I can look at the December data and make some connections. What I wanted to point out, and, and I appreciate Shane going first because he's sharing sort of those key pieces that we all wanna have as a part of our school culture. And he, he made a statement that school-wide culture starts with clarity around expectations and vision, and that's critically important so that we all understand where it is we wanna be going as a school. Um, and there's a quote that I often use that someone much smarter than me shared one time, and it's whatever we allow as a school community becomes our norm. So we really want to make sure that we have clarity around what it is that we believe about uh, who we are as a school and, and a community. And so when I looked at it quickly, I could definitely categorize, and you can see it as well in the report, there are some very clear areas that emerge more than others around like this disruption or defiance, disrespect, those kinds of things. Um, they were the consistently large um, columns on the graphs. Yet I also wanted to articulate that those numbers don't represent all kids. Yet in some way, shape or form, when we have these types of behaviors happening in our classroom, it is impacting the entire learning environment for all. So really trying to zero back and identify what is it and who and how do we define ourselves as a school. So in the last six weeks that I'll be here working with the middle school, um, I'm planning to work really closely with the student support coordinator. And we've talked about analyzing the data from, from Swiss week by week and trying to highlight where we're seeing forward progress and reducing the numbers of some of these specific areas and also where we can um, continue to focus our energies around redirecting and recommunicating behavior. She and I are also, she and I are also going into each class, uh, in each advisory beginning this week, just taking, capitalizing on the opportunity to review school-wide expectations and then ask questions at the end, like what do we need you to do as a student? What do we want our teachers to be able to do? What will we do as student support folks to both correct and alter behavior? And how can we celebrate and recognize? So um, those are just some really quick highlights around where I'm at with these two um, key areas. So I hope that's helpful. All right. I was Sorry, can I keep talking? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to also say that um, I think it's really important to give Sandy Tracy credit because she's the one who put this together. And I think it's, uh, I see how much she puts into this about crunching the numbers, making sure the graphs are just right. Um, so it's, it's a lot of work that she's done to put this together for us. So I'm just really thankful for her. So just a little framing. Um, this is a snapshot, I think, of what our, our program areas look like. Uh, but um, Andrew, Andrew, yes. Why don't we pause? We uh, Peggy's on, so we can start the meeting formally, um, and then do this as a separate part of the agenda. Is that all right? Okay. So we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. We'll just do kind of a do it officially. 
Thanks. All right, so we'll call the meeting to order at 7.06. Um, we you know, got to hear the um, celebration of learning and, and some from the principals so far, um, but let's get to the top of our agenda. Um, so do we have any adjustments to the agenda other than what we just did already? Okay, um, then we'll move to the consent agenda, approving the minutes. Um, so Chris had asked that we not approve the minutes last month for um, to amend them, and he um, mailed this adjustment to the, um, the 11-29-22 board meeting um, minutes which was um, in the part talking about the um, public complaint about against board member policy A1 after with the yes vote dismissing the complaint, all votes were yes to dismiss the complaint. He added board members commented that even though the board member in question's action didn't rise to a conflict of interest, three board members did comment that the board member in question action comments were on the board, a board member holding a public seat. Board members requested future discussion of board conduct in the code of ethics. That's something that was in there from before for the, for the board complete dismiss. So that was his comment about those minutes. Are you coming? Um, <clears throat> entertain motions to accept the minutes or amend the minutes. How did it go I'll make the motion that we accept the minutes as amended. You have a second? I, I, I think we should wait for Chris to actually be here since he requested the amendment. Okay. If you would like, we can table the November minutes and just do the December ones. entertain a motion to do such a thing. Uh, I make a motion that we uh, table the acceptance of the minutes until uh, Chris Jarvis is president wow. at the board and everybody else. Could you say that again right here? <clears throat> and I'll make a motion to table the minutes until all board members are present. Both minutes or just the November minutes? Uh, Probably both. Yeah, right. the minutes for uh, November and December. And December. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 We'll table those minutes for next meeting. Um, and then we we'll hey. on to public comments. Is there any public comment at this time? Uh, yes, Tyler Lagrange, go ahead. Uh, hi. Um, I just wanted to say uh, the the. I just wanted to speak real quickly. The biggest pushback about the failed LGBTQ resolution last month was that there was no data to show that we need any such resolution. And that's absolutely not true. Um, the Vermont Department of Health and the Devar Vermont Agency of Education published their Youth Risk Behavior Survey every two years, um, with the latest data being from 2019 due to some delays in the, the uh, 2021 data. This report clearly shows that LGBTQ kids suffer from drastically more bullying hopelessness, suicidal ideation, and suicide attempts. It's very clear in the data. Um, the data direct from Vermont kids, our kids, with 74% survey participation rate from middle school and 85% from high school. So it's hard for me to accept that we should just wait for tragic data from our school district before we decide if it's worth doing something, 
even something as small as uh, formalizing our support for the LGBTQ kids. I urge the board members to familiarize themselves with the data, just Googling Vermont Youth Risk Behavior Survey if you haven't seen it already. And uh, you can look through the data. There's plenty of stats that show, show this discrepancy all across the board. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments at this time? All right, then we'll move on to um, board comment. Does anybody have any board comment they want to make? I wanted to formally thank uh, the superintendent and Dana Decker for the community meeting uh, that was held last week. She, uh, Dana did a great job and there was a lot of really wonderful conversation that happened. Um, and so I wanted to formally thank her for that. Okay, thanks Shannon. Um, the comments I would make is that we have a number of open board seats um, up for election this, um, this voting time and petitions to get on the ballot are due at the end of the month. So if there's anybody out there who would like to run for school board, um, go to the town clerk's office and they can help you uh, manage that process. Um, and if you want to talk to any of, I'm sure any of us would be willing to talk to anybody who's interested. Um, Tammy, did you have something you wanted to say? All set? Okay. All right. So we've done the celebration of, unless there's any other bird comments, um, we've done the celebration of learning. Um, I have a board comment. Okay, go ahead. One more. Um, so I have let Andrew and Jamie know that I will not be running for this seat again. I'll be leaving the board. I've got some uh, career things going on, some, some additional um, courses I'm taking. So I won't be running for my seat. Um, and at this time, I'm going to also have to step back and uh, not um, be participating in quite as many committees and uh, board responsibilities. So there are a number of those, and, and I'm going to have to hand those off to other board members. Thanks, Shannon. Yeah, I had meant to bring that up in the adjustments to the agenda. I think at the end of the um, agenda, we'll go through the various things that you've been doing and, and try and see if we can get other people to step up to take over some of those. Yeah, can can I you. also say th thank you, Shannon, for all the work you have done, because you have done a lot on the school board. I very much appreciate it. I second that. Um, okay. So um, we were in the middle of the principal's report. Why don't we do the social, have them finish the social emotional learning report and then we'll circle back to the um, the superintendent report, if that's okay, Jamie. All right. All right. Carry on. What I would have said is uh, it, this is the yin to the yang. So the what you heard about lead them up and all the other things we do in the elementary with PBIS, responsive classroom. This is showing, um, I think, the how it's going. And we collect behavioral uh, observation data, uh, or write-ups is probably the more simpler term, on things that are unexpected behaviors. And so you can see it all listed out there. And then these graphs kind of like put it to life for you. I, I don't want to go too deep into it. You're welcome to take time to look at all, all of them. But um, the ones that for me are the most like telling are the triangle graphs. Um, and I'm noting that I should have, we should have done page numbers on here. But really proud of our primary grades who universally 90% of what we're doing is working for them. 4% uh, in the targeted and then 6% um, in the needing much more intensive. Uh, it feels like really wonderful numbers. And then in our three through five, um, I feel like we're exactly hitting the recommended mark of having 80% of what we're doing, working for 80% of the population and then 14 and six. So, and I, I think all of our data in the elementary is really steady from last year. So it just feels, it feels good and consistent for us. 
and I know that Pam already spoke, and I, I know that Jeff already spoke a little bit too, but I just wanted to highlight that, those pieces, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, have people had a chance to review the social emotional learning report? And does anybody have any questions? Um, um, real quick, Andrew, I just want, I wanted to highlight, uh, Ray, if you could go back a couple slides. The slides that that were that Andrew was pointing out is right here, um, and this is based off of national data around behavioral expectations and what schools that participate in positive behavioral interventions and support should see in regards to referrals. And so at this time of year, we would want to have students within the zero to one referral range of office discipline referrals at this point of the year. Um, and so what you're seeing here as an example in our K2 is that 90% of the students, that's the case, which is great. They, they would also say in their research that we would want 85% of our students falling in that range, meaning that the universal approach around responsive classroom PBIS is meeting students' needs when they start to get in that two to five or six plus referral range, that's when teams are meeting and we have teams that meet uh, with our folks that are part of our social emotional support teams. We call them our target intensive social emotional data team meetings. And if students are in that four or six percent, that's when we're starting to dig down into individual students and look at if we need to identify some individual behavioral support plans or social emotional support plans for them. So that just gives you, I, I wanted to give the board that sense of what's, what do we do with that data? That's like the next level of what we do with this data to better support kids. Um, one thing that might be helpful is um, seeing how many kids kind of go from the red to the yellow to the green versus green, yellow, red, you know, like is there, is this pretty stratified at this point, or is there a lot of movement between the different groups? Um, time period. Well, you can see the movement from last year to this year. It doesn't say number of kids, but you can see it within the percentages. Yeah, but like, are those are the reds all the same kids from last year to this year, or are they, you know, jumping around? Like, you're doing targeted intervention on certain kids, and how effective is that? Yeah, effective? right. Progress monitoring, right? Does the is the students dropping in the in the amount of need of support? Right. Um, another comment I would have was it was helpful in the I, these these graphs are great and I like the um, you know being able to see the fall to the fall compared. Um, but it was helpful also seeing the graph that Shane had in the lead them up um, presentation where it showed just straight the two years worth of data so that you could see that downward trend you know when you just see the fall and then the fall again and there's no spring winter spring you know you don't it's harder to tell like was there a gradual decline that then is continuing or was it you know we had one level last year and we're at a different level this year you know it might help to look at an overall trend versus just the year-to-year -year comparison to have that not that we, this is a lot of graphs already, but it might be helpful. Um, and my other question was, um, does the administration feel that there's been any change in the way things are evaluated? You know, like we did have a change in administration between the, in the high school and were things, expectations changed so that things that may have been a write up before aren't now or were then and are are now so you know how much apples to apples are we comparing in the write-ups i i think one of the things andrew was that uh we really emphasized no phones in the classroom and there was a lot of write-ups i think on phones in the past so that's been a non-issue this year um so i think a lot of write-ups if you see the graphs boy last year to this year it's a huge discrepancy and i think that's one of the major Major ones. Yeah, that's great. 
with the middle school data with it being higher is the sense that the behavior is kind of been increasing or that the teachers are enforcing it more i can only I, yeah hi andrew i can only speak to one conversation that i had with respect um to the data before we even were planning to dive into it i so there's a little bit of um some folks shared that there there's been a real intentional focus to make sure that data gets entered into swiss this year so i can't really say percentage wise et, et cetera, that there's more data entry this year than there was last fall although that's what i inferenced from that conversation so i would say just from the, that quick conversation with teachers that many of them have taken the time to it takes time to do this because they're also corresponding with families really trying to wrap that support around kids that they have been entering more data uh, into swiss more referrals than maybe they had been in the fall of last year it was an intentional focus so there could be that reflected here all right thanks does anybody have any other questions about the data report Well, thank you for putting it together and um, providing the context and explanation. It is great to see the progress in the high school and I hope we're able to continue um, in the elementary school having a small percentage. I'm hoping we will uh, continue addressing this and going forward. Thanks. Okay, we'll move to Jamie, superintendent's report. So yeah, my report I had a few important additions. Um, one, I'll be attending a, a meeting on Thursday evening, or sorry, Thursday during the day um, with uh, the House uh, Ed Committee members um, to discuss what they foresee as upcoming legislation, but to also offer some insight um, from the, the field about how what they might be considering could, could impact kid, uh, students. Um, in our schools. And so a few of those items are, uh, one, there's um, still the the item out there around how to continue to fund universal meals. The legislature did a one-year stopgap with that. Um, I have not heard of what they're considering in regards to how to pay for that moving forward. Um, the use of the Ed Fund surplus, I cannot foresee being an option this year. That's what happened last year. And why I say that is because uh, as in some of our, uh, as in your towns, but in some of our other towns, the CLAs have taken a significant decrease, um, which is um, raising havoc with tax um, implications. Um, and so when we go through your budget, you'll see that, that our budget's coming out in a pretty good place in regards to tax. A lot of that has to do with the yield and giving that ed fund surplus back to taxpayers. Um, but I have some towns, the CLAs dropped so much. Um, I can give you an example in one unified district, we're anticipating um, uh, almost a five cent decrease in taxes while the other town's gonna pay eight cents. Um, and that's based on the CLA. Um, and so anyways, that's something we'll be following because that would have a, a significant impact on our students um, and families if it's not taken up by the legislature, which there is some sentiment that it should be passed back to local districts to decide how they want to handle it. So stay tuned there. Um, the other good update I have, a positive update, is that we did know that free and reduced lunch applications decreased significantly across the state and certainly did in our school, our schools, based on it being the third year of universal meals. Um, the agency did anticipate that it's not going to affect our um, appropriations for title funding. Our allocation is going to be the same as it has been historically, and they've committed to providing school-wide waivers as they have in the past for those towns that have schools that have followed under the 40% threshold for this upcoming year. They also said that the plan is to leverage Medicaid data and 
that they plan to come out with a new annual income verification process for families moving forward to better collect um, data in regards to which uh, schools have higher levels of poverty throughout the state, which of course influences how title funding is allocated. So that's something um, that I wanted to provide the board with an update to. And then I also wanted it to let you know that um, we have held uh, forums to gather feedback on the attributes uh, for the next uh, middle school, um, White River Valley Middle School principal. That also included surveys that went out to stakeholders. Um, we did have um, 15 candidates apply and we are moving nine of those um, applications forward for the committee um, to review and decide how many out of the nine they wanna interview. That calling of the original candidates came from me based on um, just knowing of references, uh, checks, preliminary reference checks, also candidates who we've interviewed um, previously in the past for positions that we've had open. And, um, and, and based on that information, that's how we were able to call that down to the nine candidates. So the committee uh, has students, School board, Peggy, thank you for serving on the committee. Um, it's being facilitated by Michaela Martin, who works for us now. That's who facilitated the, the hiring of um, Jeff Thomas. That committee will narrow this down to two candidates who will then have site visits for a day. That process will include the com uh, community to be able to meet and give feedback, as well as the faculty and staff. I'll collect all that information and be prepared to make a recommendation for you with the goal to, to be hopefully your February meeting or a special meeting in February. Um, so I'm feeling good about the process thus far. And I'll take any questions folks may have. Thanks, Jamie. Um, with the uh, free and reduced lunch, so it's not affecting our title funds. That's used in the um, equalized pupil calculation though, right? Not this current year. Okay. With, the, with the new enactment of the legislation, it does have a weighting factor, but um, the, the expectation would be that that will have that new, that new formula that they're gonna use to come up with that for next year, meaning the income forms and the use of Medicaid data. Okay. But those preliminary numbers that we got around the cost equity model from last year was based on our previous free and reduced lunch rates. Anybody have any other questions for Jamie? <clears throat> oh, you muted yourself, Andrew. Sorry, then we're on to uh, the business manager report. You all have my report about what's happening in the business office during the month of January. If there's any questions, I'll happily answer them. Otherwise, I'll come back on when we talk about your budget. Sounds good. Um, policy committee, uh, draft three of the flag policy. So, um, Rodney, you can jump in here too, Rodney, feel free. Um, but so this policy has not changed since the last time you saw it, other than there's been a request of a slight edit from the Stratford School District um, in regards to the bottom of the first page. It's really clear that this policy has been created to allow students or approved school, school groups to um, come forward with a request of flying of a flag. You can see or staffs on there or staff is going to be struck um, before the the policy goes in front of the board for possible full board action. Um, yeah, it, it requires a staff sponsor, but it would not be that a staff group would be coming forward with a proposed um, flying of a flag so that that is going to be cleaned up. It's a slight edit. So I think we're we'll be still ready for action has been warned in the paper for action um, at the full board level next week. There's been a lot of discussion still about this at each of our local districts. Um, and I would say that if you have 
uh, a strong opinion about this policy or, or if you support the current drafting of this policy, for those full board members, it would be important for you to be at the full board meeting next week. Um, because I would say to you, this is not a policy that has uh, consensus across all of our district boards. All right. Thanks, Jeremy. Next on the agenda is task force updates. Um, do we have any task force updates? Uh, yes, uh, who is coming? I was, gonna, I was gonna mention the shadow day that we had for the task force and that first branch and it was canceled. And then uh, we rescheduled that for the 10th that um, they'll be coming down. There was about a dozen students, I believe. And then uh, we have a Newton visit planned for the, with the Cadwells. So we have a family from um, Stratford and they're gonna be presenting on that evening. But we haven't set a date for that because both of the uh, parents coach and so we're trying to find an available day, so. Yeah, and then as far as the facilities task force, they're gonna be meeting with the uh, group that the music um, group and performing arts group around the performing arts lab um, coming up. Is that next Monday already? I think it is. It is, yeah, 3.30 um, to continue that discussion. Okay. And then we'll move on to discussing the budget. So you all have your expenditure budget in your packets. We haven't made any huge changes in this draft. So right now you're looking at an overall increase of $543,910, which equates to 4.37%. It does include uh, the performance contracting. You'll see that that's been added on the last page of the expenditure, just the lease payments that we'll have to make for that, and we offset the expense. So that was really the only major adjustment this draft. I don't think you saw that last time. There was one other one, Tara. It was driver's ed. Oh, that's we right. We used that from 1.0 down to 0.5 based on determination of meeting students' needs. Um, with a 0.5 driver's ed teacher. So that was the only other FTE change from your draft um, in December to now. Great. Um, so I did have a question about how the energy stuff at the very bottom of the budget was going to be shaking out. Um, you know, you had some savings in the propane and oil fields, but then you also had the um, pellets separate, which seemed like it was going to be more than what was listed at the savings. Plus there's the um, other you know, debt payment, which increased for that. So I was curious how that all worked out. Well, I, I do know the debt payments are coming in higher, the, the lease, and we'll take action, we would take formal action on this in February. I do know that the lease payments are coming in higher than we originally expected due to interest, yeah. in, interest rates have increased since when we started this about a year ago. So is the idea that it's not going to be um, cost neutral? Anymore. Not completely, but I think for your district, the difference annually was 172. How much, Tara? $1,172 net increase in your budget. Which seemed still like a no brainer. You know, to do $1.6 million worth of work. All right, let me see if I can 
figure okay so yeah so we're looking at the um page the bottom of page 10 and the start of page 11. there's forty six thousand dollars added for wood pellets in the energy fuel oil we have thirty two thousand dollars less and you know seven thousand dollars less for electricity but twenty six thousand dollars more for propane so you know it seems like we're paying more energy costs than before or like we're budgeting for more than before the change is that so i i wasn't sure that it was adding up for me on that side of things like did we account for not using oil at all on the Bethel campus? That's a Tara question. Tara, do you know where you're coming up with that number or did it just not get adjusted? Yeah, we took out propane cost, um, sorry, fuel oil cost completely from the Bethel campus, which was $70,000. That was totally removed in your current budget of um, 23, you had $70,000 in fuel oil and that was removed altogether because you're going to be using wood pellets and an increase in propane versus having fuel oil. So last year it was budgeted for 140,000 and this year it's budgeted for 108,000. So that looks like it's $32,000 less. At the increase in your fuel oil for your Royalton campus still based on $4 a gallon. Price is almost doubled. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I guess that makes sense. You don't have a savings as far as fuel oil in Royalton campus. Have an increase. Yeah. Okay. That that makes more sense. Thank you, Tara. No, but that I want. I mean, yeah, that is going to be important for us to delineate for folks, though, right? That there's actually seventy thousand dollars in heat heating fuel savings at Bethel, even though you're only seeing that in that line item, but to to equate to thirty two. Right. Um. So the other line that I was curious about was um the twenty six ten four twenty the cleaning services, where it goes from. Like last year, we increased the budget to 100,500 from 38,000. And I just don't remember what that was from. And I tried looking in the um, expenses from this year, and I haven't seen a corresponding increase in what we're spending on that line item. But I might just be missing it because. For operations contracted services, you had 65,000 last year for Bethel and 35,5 for Royalton, and those are the same figures that are in there this year, and that's based on um, where your where your budget was. Utilization was 12,270 and 22, and then 8,700 um, for Royalton campus in 22. So that's for the 420 cleaning services. It's not cleaning services, it's contracted services. Oh, so it's just labeled wrong? Well? Yeah, it should say contracted services. That's the new chart of accounts. Okay. All right, well, something to fix. <laughs> um, but do you, do you feel like we are going through that month? Like we did increase from 38 is that just things shifting around to being in that code instead of other codes it's the same budget line item that we had in the current um for what you anticipate may needing to bring in for contracted services so that's going to be i'm trying to think of some of your contracted services off the top of my head um control technologies when they come in if it's not a repair and maintenance, but if it's just a actual, your contract that you have with them, your security contract is gonna be there. Okay, well, I guess- Well, we'll, we'll dig into that a little more though before next week. I was gonna tell the board, we're not ready for adoption tonight, so. Other than that, everything looked all right to me. Um, 
Does anybody else have any other comments on the expenditure side of things or questions? The other thing I wanted to bring up with the board, um, we talked about it a little bit in the finance committee meeting is, um, you know, this year we have a very fair favorable yield because of the big ed fund surplus. Um, if we didn't have the favorable yield, then we would see, um, you know, taxes go up. Um, and so this year it's kind of a favorable climate other than the CLA and right now we are budgeting to put in two hundred thousand dollars balance carryover from the big surplus we have and my question would be do we want to decrease that sum which would increase taxes this year but make it more sustainable going forward you know it does look like we'll have because we still have um some of the um esser funds and other grants that we're able to supplant some of our regular money we should be able to get another good surplus this year probably not as good as this this year you know we have almost a million dollars um of surplus but um we shouldn't have that but we should have some um to play with next year but basically any increase from that two hundred thousand dollars balance carryover winds up adding to the tax rate in the future so given that we're basically less than a cent increase in bethel and three cents was it in Royalton? I wondered if doing slightly weaning that down now and diverting more towards the building funds to try and take advantage of the favorable yield and avoiding a large jump in the future would be a smart thing to do. And I'm yeah, I'm, it's three cents in Royalton and just under a cent in Bethel. <laughs> So if we, you know, ascent is basically seventy thousand dollars. So we could go from two hundred thousand down to one hundred and thirty, or something along those lines, and add ascent, or just keep it the way it is and plan on dealing with it in the future. Um, but you know, if in the future we don't have money to put into um, paying down the tax rate, then that's another three cents that would be added onto a tax rate, which this year it's not, we're not asking for a big tax increase, but in the future, if we had a big tax increase and then also had to add in that, that might make it difficult. So it's the one thing I wanted to have everybody discuss tonight. Anybody have thoughts? I guess part of my thought would be, I, I understand where you're coming from, but there's a part of me that says, people are going to look at us and say, well, you're all over budgeting because you have this surplus. They're not gonna understand all this federal stuff. You, you've over budgeted, you've got all this money you're putting away and you're gonna ask us for more mm -hmm. rather than being very straightforward in our budgeting and say, we're gonna put in one cent to put in a reserve fund and just saying, this is what we're going to do on the select board. We said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put this much money aside in reserve. So we're, but so we budget for it. Right. And, and I, I, we will be doing that. I mean, anything that we're not giving back and taxes now, we're going to be putting into the reserve fund to use for capital improvements. Right. Um, but, it, but, but, but it's all coming from surplus per se. Right. Rather than this, and it's sort of like, okay, well, how about we get that money instead of whatever? It, it, it's just a different way of looking at it, I guess. Yeah, no, I mean, my argument would be that what we're trying to do is is be sustainable, right? Oh, yeah. And, I, I, under, I, I understand that, but I'm also yeah. looking at the other side, too. Yep. Shannon, okay, do you have any uh, thoughts on... I mean, I think that um, I think we're in a I mean, this is a, a happy place to be. Right. So we can acknowledge that at least um, that we're not hurting for money this year. I think we put away as much as we can reasonably um, because 
boards before us haven't been able to do that. And that's how we got into the pickle with things like million dollar heating and cooling projects. Um, but I also think that people are hurting right now. People are still recovering from COVID um, and, um, and, and the economic impact of that. And so I think, I kind of think we leave it where, where it is. We're putting away a significant amount and we'll just have to deal with um, taxes in the future. Um, we can tell people that we're just really, really lucky this year. Taxes are unfortunately probably going to go up in the future. That's what taxes do. So I don't know that people won't vote for a budget in the future, knowing that they've had a couple of years that were a little bit easier. All right, Rodney, do you have any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I guess I, I kind of agree with uh, Shannon and uh, Peggy that trying to put away extra money for savings might not settle well. Uh, yeah, then we just keep our tax kind of down this year and and even okay. though it might cause a larger increase next year. But. Well, it sounds like we have pretty good consensus then. I was mostly bringing it up just because, you know, this is a library. Uh, I, I see it. Yeah, I see it both ways. But. Yeah, I appreciate the thought, Andrew, having been on the side of a budget that didn't pass at least once. It's not a fun place to be either. So right. Um, and yeah, we still do have plenty that we're putting aside for future building maintenance and whatnot. Um, all right, so do we, it doesn't sound like other than the couple of things that you're going to look into, um, sounds like everybody's happy with the way things look right now. Is that right? Be able to, um, are we able to put it aside for now until um, until next meeting, when our special meeting to approve the budget? Wednesday. Wednesday, yes. Next Wednesday, not this Wednesday. <laughs> not tomorrow. Emily, I, I do see you, but... um. I think we're going to hold regular, you know, hold it for public comment if that's okay. Okay. Um, so then on to the next discussion item uh, preparation for annual mail or in school district meeting. Um, the the deadline for writing a letter to include in the mailer is Friday, so I will get on that and send out a draft, hopefully tomorrow, for everybody to review. Um, if there's anything that you think um, I should include as far as you know, messaging or you know, any ideas, send them my way, and I'll try and incorporate them. Um, anybody has anything else to say on that front? Now would be the time. So ideally, next Wednesday, once you approve your budget, we will move right on to the warning to get that language solidified with the hope that you would be here in person, if possible, to sign the warning that night. And then we get it over to Pam um, the next day to get her signature as your clerk of the board. Um, and to certify the warning so that we can include it in our mailer, which ideally will go to the printers early part of the week of the 23rd. Okay. Um, all right, sounds good. Um, for the warning, we talked off and on about um, combining the reserve funds to a single reserve fund instead of having separate Royalton and Bethel reserve funds. I mean, it makes sense to me to just have the single pool of money and use it on whichever campus you need it for so that we're not you know, having to ask 
taxpayers for money if we have a big pile of money in, in one town and not in the other. Um, can that be included on the warning if everybody else is okay with doing that? I'll double check that, Andrew. I thought you had already done that in your articles of agreement. I'm fairly certain that we have. But yes, otherwise, I did do that in one of our other districts last year. We put the article on the warning to create a district. So it would be White River Unified District Capital Reserve Fund and the White River Unified District Building Reserve Fund if you wanted the two separate funds. Otherwise, right now, you just have building reserve funds. Okay. Um, and a capital reserve fund would be for new buildings or what would the capital reserve fund be? capital is anything that matches your capitalization of assets policy so over five thousand dollars so it may not have to be something building specific but that something is a capitalized asset it gives you a little bit more flexibility and, and can that be used for building expenses like can you use the capital reserve fund for building expenses but not the building expenses for capital expenses right then I would say we should just have the capital one and not a separate building one. Yeah, I, I would advise I that, we, that the warning creates the unified one and that, that you, then you ask the voters to put what you have into that capital unified. That's how we did it last time, Tara, right? We called the, we called the initial question to, to create it and then we asked them to put the money in it. Yeah, we funded it with the surplus. Yep. Is this something we need to make a motion to? You do it through your, when you adopt your warning. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. All right. Is everybody okay with this? Uh, Rodney and Peggy and Kai? Good. Sounds like a plan then. Okay, Andrew. Yep. Could I recommend that when you do your letter that goes out to the public, that you very carefully explain simple language or whatever, not necessarily all the anachronisms, if I've got that word correct, um, how all that federal gift money helped us save to put money away, how, how that worked. How, if we hadn't had that, then we wouldn't have had whatever. People need to understand that. and how we used it so that it's not going to come back and bite us later. For example, did we create new problem, new programs that we're gonna to have to fund later out of our budgets? Or did right. we do things that were one-time things that actually helped us save money in the future? I'll do my best on that. Okay. <laughs> Simplified language and no acronyms, that's always difficult. In this <laughs> but I can. Um, okay, uh, update on the audit. So the plan is still to have it for you in your February meeting to review and adopt. The last thing we're waiting on is we had some additional revenue that we needed to do at the supervisory union level, which impacts any additional assessments. So we're just waiting for that to be completed by the auditors, which hopefully they'll get done this week. And then um, we'll know what the revised assessments are for each of the member districts, which will then be the final draft of the audit. Okay. All right, um, and then we're not going to do anything on the budget right now. We'll do that next at uh, the special meeting on Wednesday. We're on to public comment. So public comment at this time. Uh, yeah, Emily. Hi, I don't know if this is an appropriate question or not, but I didn't catch it in the budget when we went by scrolling quickly. Um, did we budget for a foreign language? Are we bringing foreign language back to the middle school? Because I did not see it and I'm concerned that that's not maybe in there. Um, Jamie's got his thumb up. Yes, we added we added a 0.6 back in. Thank you, Emily. Okay, thanks. Also, is that budget 
available anywhere that we could review it? Absolutely. Yeah, it's on the SU website and is sent out as part of the board packet. So if you go to the um, the folder for this meeting, if you go to the school board minutes and agendas, then in that folder for this date, it has um, the reports and documents and it'll be in that folder. Um, WRVSU conference has raised its hand. Is that a... Uh... <laughs> and, Andrew, we have somebody here. Okay. Can you hear me okay? The mic. The mic. Sorry, we have two speakers. That's okay. <laughs> so I had a question about the student support cut. It looks like, if I'm reading it correctly, and I may not be, but it looks like there's a hundred, hundred and one thousand dollar cut for student support. So I guess my first question is, what exactly are those positions? Um, and I, I had heard something about the remedial, there was remedial cuts in Royalton this year. And are those positions kind of in the same? There weren't remedial cuts. We couldn't fill the position. Oh, okay. We had somebody resign late in the game, so it wasn't oh, planned. And oh, then okay. it was so late, it was hard to hire. But um, I see. we currently oh. have that filled. Yeah, just just to be clear, it was some titling that we had in regards to positions. Um, we have this. We still have three student support coordinators for next year's budget, and we have four school counselors. And so, if you look, your school counselor line increased, which is what we have right now. So, one of the school counselor salaries essentially was being carried within the student support line. So, there's no reduction in FTEs. So, those are not. Those are not student support as far as in the classrooms helping teachers. That was my concern. Like these are these are student support coordinators like Shane Oaks that you heard from earlier tonight. Okay. Thank you. And then what about the cut? There was a cut for gym as well, right? PE. Fifty-two thousand dollars. Nope. Hold on, I'll find it. Are you cutting a position for phys ed? And that was reassignments based on PE teacher uh, was promoted from internally to do driver's ed and athletic and activities. So we are budgeting for the same FTE of PE teachers that we have currently in place. Is our PE teacher at the elementary in Royalton? Is he currently teaching health as well? Or He's no? teaching he teaches eco outdoor ed. And oh, outdoor. And, yeah, and during the winter months, a little bit of health too. All right, thank you. Is there any other public comment? Any other questions or comments? Andrew, I had one more <clears throat> question that came up in my brain. Um, if there's no more public comment that I wanted to ask Jamie. Okay. Um, so we've talked before and we've been putting off the discussion of what Jamie learned going over our articles of agreement for merging the elementary schools and it was supposed to be on agenda after agenda and it just keeps sliding off the agenda. So um, I apologize that I did not remember it at the beginning of the meeting, but as we were going through, I'm like, oh, we have got to cover that piece. Please. So I actually had it tentatively planned for your February meeting. Oh, okay. The full discussion <laughs> item. Um, if you look under 14 future agenda items, it's on there for February. Oh, okay. No, you're right. We had some other things Sorry. come up and it took us away from that. But I, I do think it would be a worthwhile um, conversation, actually a full conversation with the board. Okay. Oh, you're muted, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Um, is there one more person in person with a comment? Or, or yeah. So the other the other thing I wanted to bring up was the community meeting the other day. I wanted to agree with Shannon. It was wonderful. Um, I think that there was a lot of constructive conversations that were had. And my question is just around how does the board and the district take that information that was shared and help to ensure that those, you know, that there's positive changes now for our teachers and our students and our school? Will that information all be gathered and 
what are the next steps from those community meetings and all that information that was shared? Because specifically, there was great information about our teachers and our educators and what they need for support. So I would love to hear more of those conversations continue. Yeah, thank you for that feedback. Um, I am sorry I wasn't able to attend that. It does seem like it was a great event. So. Um, does any of the administration want to comment on? Yeah, I mean, my, the plan is to continue to have uh, conversations like we had um, last week. And certainly the plan is to then have a presentation to the full board um, around the data that we've been collecting. I, I think that data is going to be influential to, to many of our districts under the umbrella of the SU. So if we as a community, Jamie, if we were able to try to put together something, some sort of celebration for the teachers, is that something that the board and the district could help, you know, to support, I guess? So if we were to able, if we were able to get donations and everything and coordinate some sort of celebration for the teachers. Yeah, you know, teacher appreciation weeks coming soon. Okay. And yeah. I would love to coordinate with some community groups around that. That would be okay. awesome. Yeah, okay, good. What's the best way to go about that? For elementary, talk to Amber. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> reach out to the principals, but then if you need help, further help, don't be afraid to reach out to me and I can get you in, in touch with the right folks as well. I'd like to start something with the community to just open up the conversation of being oh. able to celebrate the teachers. Oh, the PTO? Yeah. Um, is this, is this based on equity or is it just like teacher appreciation week would be my question. based on equity i don't i don't know it would be for teachers we, we just had the, the meeting was based on equity the teachers came up the question came up as far as like what do our schools need and what do our students need and what do our teachers need right that was in our group in, and in so the, within the framing of equity was our understanding yeah of that meeting. Thanks. Well, I would, uh, I mean, certainly we do have the PTO um, and they would certainly be a good starting point for community action on celebrating the teachers, I think. Do we have a PTO? Okay. We, we do. We do. Oh, yeah. I Years ago, we used to have the PTO. Which one is it that has it? Royal has a very happy PTO now. And Which, Bethel doesn't have one anymore? Bethel has I always, um, Jamie Rainville, Rodney could probably speak better to this. We're in a lot of work with that. Um, we just talked about putting out a flyer to try to garner new blood in Bethel. Yeah. All right, literally today. Yeah, I think she's actually still in charge of it. It's just she got burnt out on it and just stopped yeah. doing it. She never. She still and then does nobody it was all by herself. picked it up. Well, I'm going to try to coordinate something with the community. So. I'll reach out with Jamie and just try to see if we can do some sort of celebration. I wasn't aware that Teachers Appreciation Week was coming up, but I heard that we're not doing nearly what we could. So I'd love to see it increase. Yeah, Thank it, you. it basically needs some members is what it does. Yeah. It needs more than one. Yeah. Right. Thank you. May 8th. Um, all right. Uh, why don't we take this time to talk about Shannon's um, redistributing some of her committee assignments. Um, so she's currently board clerk. She's on the um, recruitment um, committee, or what do we call that? The is task that force. Task force. Recruitment task force and negotiations. Um, is there anybody? I think um, you know, having somebody in negotiations is pretty vital. Um, so is there anybody who would be willing to step up onto the negotiations? Go ahead, Jane. Just so that, so I think knowing the time commitment would be important. You're looking at every Thursday um, from about 5.30 until 8 would be the time commitment because we're in the thick of exchanging proposals starting Thursday. Um, and and it, we're pretty set on uh, well, it's it, yeah, we've already agreed to when the meeting times happen. So there's no adjustment there. It's it's at six o'clock every other Thursday in the in the committee meets every week at 530 for us to do our work. Um, Peg, you're Rodney. Are you guys have any 
ability to do Thursday at. I can't do it. Uh, uh, conflict of interest. All oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Peggy's got cows. I've got cows. <laughs> I've got basketball at that time, unfortunately. Um, how essential is a person from Red on the negotiations committee? Like, will we be able to get by for a couple months until we have elections? Yeah, I mean, uh, possibly, right? I mean, we've had, and Shannon can speak to this, there's been a, a time when we have had a district not participate just due to um, conflicts, right? Um, you know, we're right now we're negotiating our ESP and a majority of those folks are actually employed under the umbrella of the SU. Certainly you have the most ESP folks, educational support personnel as a, the largest district. Um, but, you know, certainly we could build in executive sessions so I could keep you abreast on what's being discussed um, at our monthly meetings if you don't have someone there. Yeah, I think that would might be the way to go just because I think, yeah, I'm sure Chris is going to be coaching basketball at that time too. Um, yeah, I, I, I won't have any extra barn help boys until after basketball season. So I'm, I'm, I'm stuck doing chores on Thursday, like it or not. I mean, I might be able to join the meetings late, but um, yeah. yeah. I would say, I, I mean, again, Shannon, you could speak having been on the, I think that can be sometimes difficult, Andrew. Yeah, especially with the learning curve of negotiations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, why don't, I think we'll, not have somebody on there for now, Jamie, if you could keep us informed. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we can maybe discuss it at the, uh, I don't know if it's worth discussing at the SU board to, or I guess, see if there's any other district that would want to add an extra person or something like that. I can, I can continue to try to get there when I can, but no promises until March, but I'll help out where I can. Okay. Well, thank you. But as of March, <laughs> I'm not, not there anymore. Yeah. Um, for clerk, I, I think if I can handle doing the minutes and getting them out. Um, so I'll be, I'll take the clerk responsibilities unless somebody else would like to. Um, and how much is the recruitment task force? How much is that at the moment? It's an hour every other Monday afternoon at this point, um, around four o'clock. Um, we meet and talk. Go over plans. You've got to right. stop doing things during chore time. <laughs> it's a lot of chore time, though. <laughs> this is <for> needy cows. <laughs> they certainly are. Um, Rodney, do you have any ability to? Oh, help what, when do they do it again? Oh, Every other up. Monday at um, about four o'clock, I think. I, I could be able to do that. Okay. Google we'll me? Yeah. I don't yeah, think we a point since it's a task force. So, okay. Well, if you're able to step up for that, that'd be great. Um, Anything else we need to talk about on that front? No, that's good. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Shannon. Okay. Um, then we're on to new hires and resignations. Any of those this month? Um, and other, I don't think we have any other, uh, few, I guess that we just did other. Um, future agenda items, we have the, um, so the upgrades EI presentation, performing arts lab expansion project update, um, board code of conduct policy updates, and merged elementary school updates. That looks like it'll be a busy month. Um, the other thing we'll need to figure out at some point is, and I don't know if we want to talk about that now, is um, educational meetings for presenting the budget and um answer questions and whatnot 
Um, we usually do a couple of those during February in the weeks leading up to the um, town meeting. We want to try and schedule something for that, or we could talk about it at the uh, special meeting on next Wednesday if we want to um, when we approve the budget. We can think about it and come up with times. That work for everybody, or do you want to talk about it now? Yeah, I think we could talk about it next week. You'll just warn them as a board because before it had to be part of your, um, those had to be, you were voting via Australian ballot. So we needed as part of your warning. It, you can have a special meeting just on the budget information and, and not need it to be part of your annual warning because you're voting from the floor on your budget. Right. Yeah, we're back to that this year. Yeah. Okay, then we'll talk about figuring out what we want to do for um, community education meetings next week. So our next meeting date is going to be this upcoming Wednesday. We've got a special meeting. Um, is it warned for a specific location or um, are we going to do that at the like is it Bethel campus? Do you know, Jamie? I, I, we'll do it at Bethel. This okay. got mixed up this week, so we'll want it for Bethel. All right. So next week. And it does seven, do you want to go seven? <laughs> yeah, let's well, do Tara, that helps us too. In principles, I don't know if you, I don't know if you need to be there necessarily. So we may be able to give you that night off. Um, but Tara, that would let us be at Sharon at five thirty, and then go to um, Bethel for seven. All right, sounds good to me. Um, any anything else, or are we? Uh, I think we are ready to adjourn. Then entertain a motion. So moved. Okay. Any second? Second. All right. Thank you, everybody.